we here at Outside Extra don't deal well with horror in video games. <laughs> no! Okay, mainly me. But at least when we're playing a horror game, we know what we've let ourselves in for. So when we're having a perfectly splendid time in a non-horror game, it can be even more terrifying to be blindsided by some horror seemingly out of nowhere. What the hell, Rugrats? What am I thinking? Here then are seven of the most shockingly scary moments in non-horror games. But we're spoilers and spooks for the following. It's hard to get more cheerful than a Mario game, as Nintendo's mascot blasts gleefully through space or frolics in the tropics, all while his brother fights legions of ghosts in a dark and mouldy mansion. <coughs> Look Luigi, someone has to do the dirty work. It's not called Super Luigi Brothers. <coughs> <coughs> Mario 64 is yet another game in which you would think you can feel entirely safe, where the scariest thing that could possibly happen would be losing a race to a big penguin who cheats. <laughs> and yet there is something unsettling to be found in this charming N64 platformer, the stage known as Big Boo's Haunt, a creepy mansion accessible via a tiny cage. Okay, yes, this house is rather spooky, but the ghost house stage is a staple of the Mario series, and you would think is unlikely to deliver any seriously alarming moments. That is unless you stumbled across one particular room, an infamous room containing a haunted object permanently etched into the memories of many terrified 90s Mario fans. Ah! Ah! Haunted piano! Haunted piano! This possessed piano looks entirely benign until you get right up close to it, at which point it will try, and quite possibly succeed, to chew your head off in what can only be described as a fairly massive tonal shift for Mario 64. Like any good eldritch horror, but unlike most of Mario's enemies, the piano is completely unkillable. Despite what was written in the game's official guidebook, which said with a lot of effort you can beat the piano, in an informational error that surely trapped more than one poor child in an endless, unwinnable war with this famously frightening instrument. Man, I wish, and I can't believe I'm saying this, Luigi was here. Look who made the scene! Agent Vodello? Where are you? On TV, of course! where I was always meant to be. I mean, look at my hair, darling. How can hair this fabulous not be on TV? When planning a house party, it's important to designate which rooms are fine for guests to go in, which one you lock all the breakable china in, and which one you keep your horrifying repressed memories in that no one must ever see. Jump into the mind of Psychonauts party planner Mila Vadello, and you'll find one huge dance party for you to explore. It's a real upbeat place, and that's not just because of the banging tunes. Nothing terrifying could happen here, you may think, but stumble into this side room away from the main party and you'll discover a playroom and a sad backstory for our outgoing hostess. Come on, this room's no fun. Let's leave, baby. Turns out that before becoming a constant partygoer inside her own brain, Mila looked after a bunch of adorable children in an orphanage, but it burned down and she was unable to save the orphans from the flames. This is truly heartbreaking, but head into this trunk and you'll discover what terrors Mila has locked away inside the recesses of her mind. In here are Mila's nightmarish memories of the children as they burned alive in the flames and she heard them all crying out for help with her psychic abilities. And that's the worst thing I'll say today. In case you're not familiar with Psychonauts, it's very much not like this the rest of the time. Can we go back to the kids' summer camp where we started? That was fun and nice.
Lemmings was a 1991 puzzle game in which you were tasked with safely shepherding a gaggle of fast-moving, vulnerable creatures. A bit like sheepdog trials if you could choose to make a sheep explode whenever you wanted. In this fiendish title, each lemming can be assigned one of several tasks that, when deployed with correct timing and skilled coordination, will ensure the safety of the herd at large. Assuming you have the patience to experiment with different techniques and approaches, and don't get immediately sidetracked by the fact that, again, you can make the lemmings explode whenever you want. <laughs> what with all the lemming explosions, I'll go on then one more. You might assume that the greatest evil in this cutesy puzzle game is you, the player. That is, until you bumble your way through enough of the game to get to level 14 of the tricky series of stages. Holy f***ing shit! Yes, out of nowhere, this adorable puzzler turns into a gore-soaked hellscape. Dripping with blood and littered with demonic remains, snakes and skulls tied up in viscera? This complete left turn into a blood-filled abyss might reasonably lead you to assume that the developers at DMA Design quite simply lost their minds when they programmed this level, which is called, appropriately enough, MENACING in all caps and with two exclamation marks. There is, however, a slightly more sane reason for the existence of this abrupt detour into Nightmaresville. The level is a reference to Menace, a side-scrolling shooter made by the same studio a few years prior that features some of the same gory environments. Not that many kids playing Lemmings would have known that at the time, more likely assuming that they, their computer, and all the Lemmings in it had quite simply been dragged to hell. Maybe as punishment for all the Lemmings they exploded. <laughs> oh, no regrets. Pokemon the Kawaii Animal Fighting Simulator tells the story of a young child going out into the world to catch them all, because apparently in this universe there's no such thing as Fortnite to keep them all busy. In Pokemon Red and Blue, and its subsequent reimagining Pokemon Let's Go, you go out into the world and do battle with trainers and wild Pokemon. With bright music, sunlit paths to follow, and even the darkest caves framed as action-packed rather than spooky, you'd think you were safe from the trappings of horror. That is until you come to Lavender Town. With a name like Lavender Town, you might assume that the main export from this place would be floral scented gifts, but listen to the spooky music and you'll learn that in actual fact it does a roaring trade in spine tingling chills. See, Lavender Town is home to the Pokemon Tower. This tower is a memorial to all the deceased Pokemon who weren't lucky enough to just faint at the end of a poker battle or just didn't fit inside the Pokeball. R.I.P. But rather than merely being depressing, the tower is haunted by ghosts that want nothing more than to grab you and throw you out like ectoplasmic bouncers. Not only that, but the trainers you'll battle in the tower all seem to be horribly possessed. Me? Malevolent spirit? That's rich coming from someone living in a haunted tower. And you know, I think I could have coped with all of it if it weren't for this huge ghost slash head bouncer that puts the frighteners on your poor companion Pokemon. Yikes, okay Evie, let's go back to the less sinister original game. Never mind! Endless Ocean is a game about nothing more than swimming about in coral reefs, marvelling at nature's undersea bounty and occasionally prodding nature's undersea bounty until you find out what it's called. Few games in history can match the totally zen vibe of this 2007 Wii scuba sim set in the South Pacific, which begins with your partner Catherine explaining that your job is to hang out and dive when you feel like it.
and it doesn't ever get much more strenuous from there. If you can even be asked to pull on your wetsuit, the game offers a vast range of sea creatures with which to interact, and different aquatic environments in which to hang out with them. <laughs> There is a gentle story, but little pressure to follow it, as the game is less about progress and more about burbling scuba sound effects that keep you, the player, permanently blissed out. It's a lovely game, 99.9% .9 of the time. Because even this laid-back exploration game can't resist ever so briefly becoming genuinely and deliberately terrifying. Expect to have your mellow thoroughly hushed if you venture to swim around in these underwater ruins, and pick up what might look at first like bits of old pottery perhaps, only to find they are in fact fragments of a lost idol to a mysterious deity. The trouble really begins back on the boat however, when for each piece of the idol you recovered, you will be haunted by terrifying and threatening voices. Clearly reaching into your mind from some hellish dimension, these voices speak of a curse and offer such cryptic clues as you must atone to the sleeper, which is a bit much frankly when all we wanted to do was stroke a dolphin. That voice isn't the only one warning you, the discovery of the idol distresses the usually chill Catherine, who assembles the lost pieces only reluctantly. While most frightening of all, you'll start receiving anonymous emails that warn the idol is cursed by a dark god from the prehistoric era, foretelling your imminent death in terrifying all caps like a hotmail chain email. The emails promise the terror you've awoken will devour you and spread to all living beings, which if we're honest, makes it hard to go back to floating peacefully around coral reefs as I guess that includes fish. Sorry little fella, I guess your soul belongs to the deity now. All glory to the deity. Let mommy turn on your nightlight, sweetie. That'll keep those shadow monsters away, champ. Still, you're going to frighten him. Rugrats was a highly successful 90s Nickelodeon cartoon following the adventures of a bunch of barely walking babies. It spawned movies, games, and another TV show where they were awkward teenagers instead for some reason. But one game fondly remembered by fans, mostly for its wonderfully accurate 3D rendering of the Pickles house, is Rugrats Search for Reptar, released on the original PlayStation. What this amounted to was a bunch of cute mini-games based on Rugrats episodes, such as Hide and Seek, gotcha. going on an egg hunt, and playing mini-golf with your friends. Damn, those are some gifted babies. There were things that got in your way, like Tommy's mean older cousin Angelica, or a very angry goose. But overall, nothing too spooky. That is, until you went to the supposed safety of Tommy's Reptar Nightlight. This would kick off the mission Let There Be Light, where, with the house lights all off due to a power outage, Tommy thinks all the light is trapped in the refrigerator and heads downstairs to let it out. I wonder where all the light went. The Rugrats episode on which this mission is based is a cute adventure where all the babies bravely go together to open the fridge and everything they're scared of turns out to be nothing. In Search for Reptar, however, instead of being part of an adorable band of babies, one-year-old Tommy is all on his lonesome. And I have it on good authority that one-year-old is when babies are at their most delicious to ghosts, which, maybe I didn't mention, are everywhere in this level. That'll keep those shadow monsters away way more than you'd expect in a house that doesn't have its own spooky Netflix series. We can only assume this place was built on the site of a haunted doll factory which burned down and was originally built on a cursed graveyard because there are ghosts aplenty. Okay, they call them shadow monsters, but honestly, that's worse. Take that! The once bright and welcoming Pickles home turns into a creepy haunted house, filled with these terrifying clip art ghost-shaped nightmares which you have to fight off with your single rubbish flashlight like Alan Wake in a diaper. Rugrats, I didn't sign up to see a child get got by ghosts. If I wanted that, there's a whole horror subgenre on Netflix I could go through. <laughs> Still, once you reach the fridge and the lights are finally back on, thanks to good doggo Spike, the Pickles home is back to its warm, welcoming pastel shades. <laughs> now there are no more monsters, so long as you stay away from the nightmare clown robots in the basement. 
What did I just say? Link from the Legend of Zelda series is no stranger to spooky stuff. It's just one of the reasons we love him, because he's so brave. Oh, yes, he is. Who's a brave little Link? <laughs> But amidst all the fearsome foes and daring do, Link can still find corners of the world that aren't overrun with monsters. Places to take a beat and remember what's good in the world. Places like Kakariko Village. In this bucolic town nestled in the eastern corner of Hyrule, life moves at a lazy pace, and there's little to get upset about unless you rile up the local cuckoos. <laughs> It's even got a twee windmill with its own theme tune, which, when played to the owner, spins the mechanism into hyperdrive, draining the nearby well. Oh, fooey. Well, maybe Link can get down there and see what's what. Hmm. At this point, things start to take a turn as it transpires that beneath the surface of this charming town lurks a sinister and ancient network of tunnels filled with evil beasts, as if Kakariko Village was written by Stephen King. The bottom of the well is a maze of magic walls and nasty monsters, but slogging through this sort of nonsense is exactly Link's whole deal. And so, while a bit spooky, this miniature dungeon won't unsettle the seasoned Ocarina of Time player. Until, that is, you go through this door in particular. Well, this isn't going to be good. And it isn't good. In a really striking escalation of the game's willingness to horrify, you are plunged into a pitched battle with an enemy known as Dead Hand, a mouldering pale blob creature that traps you in its disembodied grip, then shuffles nightmarishly over to feast on you. It's hard to say exactly what the worst thing is about the horrifying Dead Hand, but in the top five would be how easily it seems to entangle you in its branch-like limbs. <laughs> and the horrible leisurely pace with which it crept over to you once ensnared, and the way its expressionless face lowered down to yours oh so slowly. <laughs> One thing we can all agree on, however, is that for what up until now has been a fun-filled and only occasionally spooky game, this is a massive rug pull in terms of sheer terror, so thanks for that, Nintendo. <laughs> The whole encounter is as unpleasant as it is burned forever into our memory. Thank God the rest of Kakariko Village manages to be less terrifying. In fact, let's head into this house to calm down. New plan, we never play this game again. So those were some of the shockingly scary moments in non-horror games that, you know what, caught us off guard. So they scared us more than they should have, but you know what, they still scared us. And you, you know what, we are confident enough in ourselves to admit that. And uh, if you are confident enough to admit that at home, maybe you can share your examples in the comments below. <laughs> and if you enjoyed it, uh, please do give us a thumbs up on this video. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already. And do feel free to check out one of our other videos. We're doing lots of spooky streams at the moment as it is the spooky season, so do feel free to join us on those. We are very upfront and honest about how spooky they are, because we're not mean. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye!